I've built and tested a lot of batteries and I've had a lot of requests to identify which one is the best. Battery prices have fallen significantly and Black Friday sales are coming up. Tax incentives are expiring. It's time to do a lineup and compare them back to back. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. It's time to break down the options. There are tons of battery options and I am not covering them all today. For instance, I've tested many server rack batteries and you can still go this route. But I think the best value in today's market is the wall mount or power wall type of form factor. So that will be today's focus. The savings with this style of battery is possible because they use 280 to 314 amp hour cells instead of 100 amp hour cells that the server rack design uses. That dramatically reduces the amount of hardware that's required to deliver the same capacity. I'm testing three options today because I've tested all of them personally and it will give you a good idea of the price range and performance that you can expect from this style of battery. The pricing I'm showing is of the time of the recording of this video. They do fluctuate around, so I can't guarantee it'll be exactly the same when you click on the links, but it should be pretty close. The unit price I'm showing in the chart includes additional discounts you can get by using my discount codes in the description below, and it includes taxes for Ohio, which is where I would be shipping them to. Taxes for your area may vary a little bit, but it should be pretty close. You can find the install, assembly, and performance of all of the batteries that I'm showing today on my website, projectswithdave.com, on the Batteries tab. You'll also be able to find it all using the links in the description below. The first one on the chart is this very popular EG4 wall mount indoor 48 volt battery. There is an outdoor version with very similar performance characteristics. I've installed this battery with my EG4 12K PV. It connected easily and worked flawlessly together. A friend of mine has installed this pair about a year ago with his Solar converter, allowing him to achieve a whole home backup system. He had no issues with the install or operation, so it's pretty easy to recommend these batteries. The costs shown here include my exclusive discounts and Ohio sales tax rates. I separated out the shipping cost numbers for reference because they're going to be a little bit different for everyone. And depending on how many batteries you buy or where you live, it can range anywhere from zero to several hundred dollars. So the numbers are just there for reference. The EG4 battery from Signature Solar is the most expensive at $3,370, but there's a reason for that. Because it uses 280 amp hour cells, the capacity is also the lowest at 14.3 kilowatt hours per battery, bringing the cost to $236 per kilowatt hour. This battery and all the batteries we're looking at today use lithium iron phosphate cells, which is a very stable, safe, and high cycle life chemistry. This battery uses a house branded BMS with the lowest continuous rated discharge current at 140 amps. But I think they're underrating the BMS to manage expectations because it has a rating of 200 amps for 30 minutes. So I doubt the performance is really any different than the JK BMS that you'll find in the DIY options that we're gonna look at today. The battery does have an on-off switch on the side and a breaker so you can physically disconnect it. It's really nice to have both of those features. Although my friend tells me his little kids have at times seen the little glowing blue button and turned the battery off. So you might wanna cover it with something if you have kids running around. The indoor version has a very nice LCD screen. It's a touch screen. You can adjust the parameters and see everything that's going on with the battery. It also has this really nice LED illuminated ring. And right now you can see they're all green, so the battery is completely full. And as it discharges, they disappear. So you can see the capacity of the battery from far across the room. You don't even have to come up and touch the screen. I really kind of like that feature. The BMS in this battery has a passive balancing system, which works well when you regularly charge to 100%. It has standard RS-45 and CAN communication ports. The case contains dual fire suppressors and has built-in heaters to maintain operation even in below freezing temperatures. It has a compact vertical form factor with all the connectors on the top of the battery. The nice thing about that is they can be cleanly contained in a nice conduit box and you can get an outdoor or indoor version of the conduit box. When connecting to the EG4 inverters, they can mount right to the top of the box, making one completely integrated unit. Unfortunately, it does not have casters, so moving it around is a little bit of a challenge, but you should only have to do that once. Finally, what makes these the most expensive solution is the UL1973 and UL9540A certifications. The testing that is required to achieve UL certification is very expensive. If you're installing a system, 
that needs to be inspected, you will need UL certification. In addition to the certification, it has a 10-year warranty and US-based tech support. I've used Signature Solar's tech support many times, and there is a significant value in being able to call someone on the phone and work through a problem during the day. Even though this is the most expensive of the three, some people won't even have the option to go DIY. All right, now let's look at the DIY options. I have four batteries here. These two are Basin Green version one and version two batteries. I have full build and test videos for both of these batteries, so you can find those on my channel or on my website. They're relatively easy to build and they have performed flawlessly. I currently have these Gen one and Gen two packs connected in parallel and they're still able to communicate with each other using the communication ports. Right now, I have them connected up to the SunGold power inverter that I'm running some tests on. And I've also connected them to my Victron system and to my EG4 12K PV. And I'll put the communication settings on my website for your reference. This version one battery has 306 amp hour cells in it, and this version two battery has 314 amp hour cells. I recommend getting the 314 amp hour EVE cells. They have an actual capacity of 325 amp hours, which pushes your total capacity to 16.6 kilowatt hours. The inverter I'm currently testing can deliver over 11 kilowatts, so I need two batteries in order to check the full capacity. Since this is just for testing purposes, I've connected the inverter to the first battery with four aught cables, and then to the second battery with two aught cables just in parallel. Now, ideally, I would have short four aught cables connecting these in parallel, and I would take the negative from one battery and the positive from the other battery, and that would get them even more balanced than what I currently have. But even in its current configuration, they are staying within one or 2% of each other, and when they charge all the way to the top, they both hit 99 to 100%, no problem. Let's look at the comparison. The cost for the US source case with 314 amp hour batteries is $1,650 with tax included. The shipping is generally free, but it does depend on where you're shipping it. There may also be a credit card transaction fee if you're using a credit card to make the purchase. I have two sources for these DIY batteries. One is US and European stock, and the other is an Alibaba link with China stock. You might be able to get it much cheaper sourced directly from China, but delivery timing could take substantially longer, maybe even a month or more. Since the 314 amp hour cells have an actual capacity of 325 amp hours, this pack has a 16.6 kilowatt hour capacity, bringing the cost per kilowatt hour, not including shipping and fees, to $99 per kilowatt hour. That is super cheap. Just one of these batteries is enough to power a home's refrigerator lights, microwave, well, and other emergency utilities for at least a day with no problem. If you pair it with a three kilowatt solar array, you would likely to be able to keep your critical systems running year round, off grid, if necessary. Running my entire off grid system with this 15 kilowatt hour battery for the past week was no problem. I used my 3200 watt firewood rack solar array for the input. You can see I had a very sunny day right after my complete discharge that was able to charge the battery back to 100% in one day. We had cloudy or rainy days the whole week, but the battery never dropped below about 60% capacity. So it's easy to see how a 3.2 kilowatt array and a 15 kilowatt hour battery would work fine for me, at least in the summer months, to put all of my emergency systems completely off grid. But of course, you know from my previous videos that even my 25 kilowatt hour battery wasn't quite enough for the cold dark month of January. The cells for all the batteries we're looking at today are the same stable lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Even though my build and test videos use the Basin Green House BMS, you can now get them with a 200 amp JK BMS. And so that is what I'm showing in my chart for performance and cost. That's the same BMS that these batteries use, so it helps give a more apples to apples lineup. That being said, I did all my testing with the Basin Green BMS and it works fine. I've had no issues with them. The programming is a little bit more challenging. If I were ordering it today, I would get the configuration with the JK BMS. Not only can it achieve a 200 amp charge and a 300 amp discharge rate, but it has built in active balancing. The separate active balancer that you can get with the Basin Green BMS requires double the wiring and you can't control the timing of the balancing. If you go with the cheaper brand, BMS, I would skip the active balancer and just go with the built-in passive balancing on the regular BMS. The built-in active balancer on the JK BMS can be turned off and controlled to operate at whatever voltage you desire. Plus, you have much more control over all the other settings 
and there's more online support for the JKPMS for connections that you might want to do with various inverters. Both version 1 and version 2 of this battery have an on-off switch that directly connects to the BMS, and version 2 actually has a 200 amp physical breaker, which I really prefer so that you can physically disconnect the system and you don't have to worry about relying on the electronics. Even though the BMS can deliver more than 200 amps, I would plan on any continuous loading to be under 150 amps. I ran it at 200 amps for over 30 minutes with no issues, but the breaker starts to get very warm. The JK BMS and the Basin Green BMS have RS-485 and CAN communication ports with plenty of communication protocols to choose from. To connect the JK BMS to my EG412K PV, you set the CAN protocol in the BMS to 11, which is Lux Power, and the lithium iron phosphate setting to number six in the EG4 software. With those settings, you can control the battery by state of charge. Of course, you can always control these batteries by voltage, and sometimes that's actually preferable. These cases do not have fire suppression, although the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is very stable, so that's probably not a big deal. Although I have these standing vertically, the form factor is actually horizontal. If you stack them vertically, you can get a rolling platform like the one on this battery, but that does cost extra. Now, here are the things that you give up to save money. Since it's DIY, it does not have UL certification. So if you're building a system that requires inspection, you will not be able to use this one. While the components do have individual warranties, for all practical purposes, you're basically self-insuring when you build one of these units. For tech support, you can send an email to the company and get a response, but sometimes it takes several days to solve a problem, so it's not the best. But you can get two batteries for the price of one, and that's pretty hard to beat. Finally, we have two form factors for the Yish Energy battery from Yisheng. My current build video that I have on my channel is for this horizontal stackable unit on the rolling car. But there's also this vertical form factor, which I happen to prefer, and I'll explain why in a minute. The assembly and setup for these two is almost exactly the same, so you can follow the horizontal build and use it for this case. You shouldn't have any issues. The version I'm pricing in this comparison is the vertical battery with the 314 amp hour EVE cells. They have an actual capacity of 325 amp hours, and that gives us a total capacity of 16.6 kilowatt hours for this DIY battery as well. The cost for the US source case with 314 amp hour batteries is $1,573 tax included. The shipping will probably be in the $300 range, but it does depend on where it's being shipped and whether you're sourcing it from China or European stock. Because these 314 amp hour cells have an actual capacity of 325 amp hours, this pack will have a 16.6 kilowatt hour capacity, bringing the cost per kilowatt hour, not including shipping or fees, to $95 per kilowatt hour. Depending on your shipping situation, it could be the cheapest option. The cells are the same stable lithium iron phosphate chemistry, but they have double tapped battery connections. Having two connection points for each post makes it easier to guarantee no high resistance connections with the assembly. Yeah, it's just a little safer way to put it together. Both the horizontal box and the vertical box come with the 200 amp JK BMS delivering 200 amp input and 300 amp output with built-in, fully controllable active balancing. The PCB is used to connect all of the cell sensors, including the temperature sensors, and that results in a much cleaner install and layout. The BMS has an on-off switch, and there's a dedicated 200 amp breaker for full disconnect on the side or on the front of the unit. The vertical case also includes a separate fuse on the negative line for the BMS protection. Just like the Basin Green, even though the BMS can deliver more than 200 amps, I would plan any continuous loading to be under 150 amps, or the breaker is going to start to get really warm. The JK BMS has RS-485 and CAN communication ports with quite a few communication protocols to choose from. To connect the JK BMS to my EG412K PV, you can set the CAN protocol in the BMS to 11 lux power and the lithium iron phosphate setting to number six in the EG software. With those settings, you can see and control the battery with state of charge. And of course, you can always control them by voltage if you want to. Both of these cases have fire suppression, which is very unusual for a DIY case. You can purchase a rolling chassis if you want to stack these vertically, which costs extra, but the vertical one comes with casters. So you can move it around with no problem. Once again, you have to give up some things to save money. Since it's DIY, it does not have UL certification. So if you're building a system that requires inspection, you would not be able to use this one. There isn't a warranty on the assembled product, but since it's half the price, maybe self-insurance, 
will also make sense here. Tech support is a little bit slow. You have to do it through email, but there's plenty of support for managing the JK BMS online. And that's the only software part that's involved in these batteries. As I mentioned before, I like the vertical version of this battery the best. And there's a few reasons for that. The horizontal one can be stacked three high. So if you're getting several of these batteries, you can turn it sideways. Maybe that makes sense for you. But if you're just getting one or two, or if you're like me and you have a garage wall where you wanna keep things flat and tight against the wall, the vertical form factor just works out a lot nicer for space saving. And it has a few additional features that I really like. It has handles on the side, handles on the top, casters on the bottom. The breaker is a cover for it, just a little bit cleaner layout. The battery terminals are actually recessed into the case and it has a plexiglass cover that covers this. So even if you don't have these terminal covers covering things perfectly, the cover over the whole thing will make sure that no one ever touches these components. It's just a lot tighter than having them running down the front of the battery. You have a breaker on the positive, you can physically disconnect everything. And in addition, there is a fuse and a fuse will cut things off much quicker than a breaker. So there's an added level of protection that actually isolates the board as well. You don't need a separate cart to make it mobile. It's just a little bit of a cleaner build overall. The price between these two units is very close, and I think you would be happy with either one. Because the Yisheng battery uses the double mount post, it's best to source the batteries with the case. The Basin Green battery uses standard welded studs, so you can source them from a lot of different locations, sometimes a lot cheaper. So you could buy just the case and get the batteries from another location. I do have alternative sources for raw cells from Syntec Pro with US stock and they have just reduced their prices to $84 per cell for the 314 amp hour cells. And that is hard to beat. Just go to the battery tab on my website and go down to raw cells and you can see what's available there. Past Dave wanted to save time and only compare the wall mount batteries, but I feel like I have to throw a server rack option in as a contender. There are two good options that match our list very well. The first is a Pites system. It has a very robust, high quality construction. Current Connected offers a mini three battery stack that's a perfect comparison to the others in the list. The cost is quite a bit higher at $5,653 plus shipping for a 300 amp hour or 15.4 kilowatt hour system. That makes it $376 per kilowatt hour, the most of any of our options. You can see why I didn't want to talk about them. And that's before shipping. Now, it's a really nice modular battery with all the bells and whistles, but that's a lot of extra money to spend if you don't need those features. There are three things that may push you in that direction. First, it's modular, so you don't have to lift a massive battery all at once. It has 300 amps of available continuous charge and discharge current with a 15 second peak at 540 amps. And that's a lot for such a small battery. It's also designed for high vibration environments. So if you're installing a battery in a vehicle, you may wanna spend the extra money for a Pites battery. If you want the server rack form factor, you can save $1,000 for a very similar product from EG4. Signature Solar has a three battery mini cabinet that can take the Life Power 4 or EG4 LLS server rack batteries. Here I've priced out the EG4 LLS version at $4,672 with tax and discounts. It has almost the same feature as the Pite system, except it has heating, dual fire suppressors, and a screen. I'm not gonna go into excruciating detail on the server racks, but I just wanted to throw them in there so you had the reference. Finally, if you need to get an inspection or don't want the hassle of building your own or the risk of building the battery yourself, go with the EG4 battery. If you want the cheapest solution, get the base and green battery and source the cells from Syntec Pro. If you want a low cost solution with fire suppression, casters, double cell connections, and a little bit cleaner build, go with the Yeast Energy battery. This one's pretty nice, I like it a lot. These batteries are all the 48 volt or technically 51.2 volt architecture, and they'll be compatible with most hybrid inverters on the market. However, the market is moving towards higher voltage architectures in the 100 volt or more range. So if you can't afford to build your system now, don't stress about it. Technology in the space is moving fast. Your options are only going to increase with time. If you wanna see the latest install and testing for the EG4 battery, watch this video right here. And if you want to see a DIY build for one of these batteries, Watch this video right here.
I've included the spec sheets, the product links, the discount codes for all of these batteries in the description below and on my website, projectswithdave.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.